Question three. When we know about something, there is a, there is an issue anywhere in the church, in at home, in uh, in the workplace, and it is something that is causing an issue, a problem, any hindrance. Somebody is not happy about something, and somebody knows about it, but. Just like question two, the person is covering it, or the person who is supposed to take action. Again, starting from the pastor, the head pastor, the senior pastor, the leader, whoever is there, the mother, the father, they know about the problem that has been caused because whether it's two people, three people, whatever, or a sin that somebody has committed. But we have this delay, oh, well, you know, later, later. Oh, it's all right, just, just pray about it. And one other important one is that, which it's something that we should also examine. Someone has offended a brother, just as we have in Matthew 18, you know, has offended a brother, a sister, a sister has offended a sister, you know, vice versa. And there is a need to have it resolved. And one person says, oh, no, uh, for, for him, for her, I'm not going to talk to you, I'm not going to uh, do that. And The question is that if the third person or the other person or the pastor or the leader or whoever knows about it, and so then the then the person who is let's say uh, who is a neutral to it says, oh, it's all right, you know, it does, you know, then it's all right. They just say, oh, don't worry, you don't worry, don't you don't worry, just just let it go, let it go. When this person has done something evil, sinful, and all that. And sometimes the other uh, contrast is that the person who has done something wrong is supposed to go to A or B or C and say, I'm sorry for what I have done. Please forgive me. You know what happens? That person rather says and prays to God, Lord, please forgive me for that sin I committed against that brother or sister. Is that how it's supposed to be done? We're supposed to go. That means go to the person. And work it out. Tell the person, this is what you've done. And the person is also supposed to say, oh, I'm sorry. But this is Christian. I'm not talking about uh, uh, people outside the church. In the church, instead of the person to confess and say, I am sorry, confessing and asking for forgiveness, and they would rather go to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the sin I committed against uh, the brother. And I have many scriptures to read, but I'm just giving all the broad, and then later we'll go over it. So why do we continue in such a thing? These are questions. These are important questions. Number, number four. If your son or daughter begs you to attend their prom night, would you go? Would you allow? And then, you know there's nothing uh, scriptural about it the prom night, high school, and I actually had to, uh, uh, to uh, the, this, you know, try to find out what, the, what is it all about. And I learned about it, I said, oh no. No way, Jose, as they say. So that's a question for us to ask. 
if there's something that will cause sin, and sometimes, do, what, what do we say? Oh, it's a small sin. It's, it, it's just uh, uh, something small. And so, uh, this is just, just this something small. All right, we'll, we'll come to, I read, uh, but I will quickly read uh, one, Verse, maybe that will generate a quick uh, comment. And this is in James, the Epistle of James. And this may apply, uh, one would say, maybe to the Old Testament, but there's a reason uh, the Apostle James was asking this question. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. Back to this question number four, uh, number five now. If your son or daughter has a graduation on Sunday, would you skip church and go to the graduation? And in this case, it's a high school or college graduation and it's being held on Sunday. What would you do? Question Five. Question six. What excuse would we give? So, well, it's, uh, this is the only time uh, he or she is graduating. If I don't go, it to be, you know. By the way, I also have asked a question. I've been told that uh, the actual graduation certificate is not given that very day. It's mailed to the house. But the question is that, where is our preference? When someone asks the Lord, what is the first commandment? Or what is the most important commandment? So thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ added this verse, and with all your mind. So if God is saying that you are to worship me, and we know in the Old Testament, what did they say? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, he is one. Right? It's in Deuteronomy. It's there that, you know, and everybody, they all recite. It's something that they all know. And there is no one who will say, oh, I won't, uh, I, I'm going to disobey. And we know what happened uh, in the Old Testament. When God gave the commandment, everybody, each of you, what are you supposed to do? You know, go, get this, uh, you know, go and get all your uh, provisions. Get your manna, get your, go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, uh, you know, uh, day we call it. And then on the Sabbath day, what are you supposed to do? You are not to go out. You are not to go and get anything. But just like uh, the scriptures, there are so many examples that also apply today. So there was an example of someone, you know, God has said, you don't, you must not. And what did he do? He said, oh, for me, I'll go and get some wood, go and get something that I need to cook. I need to do this thing. I need to. So he went out and he was caught. And what happened to him? He was stoned to death. Why is that example in the scriptures? So, question six. If God warned us or warns us, because there's all, it's always present, if God wants us not to be deceived, but we ignore 
and continue to sow sin or to you know encourage sin, but end up in the lake of fire. What are we going to say? Were we warned or were, were we not warned? And we know we Christians have the most excuse. When an unbeliever becomes a Christian, they are holy and a, 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 and a person, a Mohammedan or Islam person, becomes a Christian. No, they cast out anything else. Their family, you know, your family even, you know, go to the extent of doing honor killing, uh, killings because they say this person, our brother, our son, uh, father, whatever the person is, became a Christian, kill him or her. And I have seen, you know, a young lady martyred to death. I mean, I, I, it's, it's horrible that beating this young lady, teenager, because she became a Christian. She went for a Bible study in India. They beat her and then set her on fire. I didn't watch that part anyway. So, um, and you wonder why? What are we doing as Christians? We, those who have been born into the new uh, life, new hope. We're giving excuses, every time, excuses. Galatians 6, 7 says, If God puts it there, then what is our excuse? God says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen? So we know that it is something very important. Question 7. If God wants Christians to avoid spending our time with evil people or watching them because their ways would corrupt us, would we ignore him and end up in the lake of fire? First Corinthians 15, 33. It says, Be not deceived. You see what God is saying again? Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. When we see something evil, something bad that is being done and we, you know, oh, we are laughing about it and we are joking and uh, we are encouraging it basically. But God said, redeem the time. You know, don't, and don't uh, have time with all those uh, people. They will corrupt you. We always say, oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm dead. But God is saying it. So if God is warning you and has already warned you and you continue in it, you end up it's a question for us to deliberate on. Question eight. If our eyes causes us to watch sinful videos online would we continue watching it but end up in the lake of fire? Because we think, oh, it's just this thing. And especially, we know when we leave the TV on all day, all night, it is something to watch out for. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11 says, Know ye not 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. How many be not deceived? Three times now. Neither fornicators. We will say, oh, I don't, I'm not doing that. But when you are watching fornicators, what, does that, what do you become? No idolaters. I'm not an idolater, but then you watch them. What, do you, what, what, what have you done? Ad, no adulterers. How many people? What do they call it? Uh, well, um, Oscars. That's what they call it. Yeah, I will confess that I've watched it before because I wanted to know, you know, I've watched it and then I see all this glamour, all this prostitute, or should I say prostitution, where they dress to kill, they, 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 they paint, they do all these things, all because they are trying to entertain, uh, you know, they are trying to expose themselves. And also, what do you call it, Super Bowl. That's when they also show. I think we know uh, some a decade ago or so, you know, uh, someone, you know, a singer, had to show her, her upper body, all in public for everybody to see on TV. What was that for? And people say it's a wardrobe malfunction. That's a lie. That would double, uh, double sin to say that it's a, it's a mal, uh, wardrobe malfunction. It was deliberate prostitution. nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, and we know what that is, and it's being encouraged now, everywhere. They call it LGDB, all this Q and all the uh, names that, it used to be uh, gay, and, and gay used to be a, 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 a great word. Oh, this person is gay, it was lively and all that. The British would say that, and it's, it was a good word. Now, you say that it means you are, you are an abominable person or you are uh, following uh, the acts which God considers uh, an abominable. Verse, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers. Revilers, we know, Mardi Gras, Rio de Janeiro. What did they do there? They also exposed themselves. Let people know that, oh, uh, they are, it's, it's a fanfare, it's all this thing. It's immorality, it's prostitution. 